saying, well, we're, we're going to be uh, not stepping on the brake anytime soon. And now this report. Of course, uh, it, it's, uh, people, uh, there are a lot of people who would agree with dialing back because there's a lot of criticism of these super low rates, zero rates and negative rates being very destructive uh, both uh, for, the banking, for the banking industry and also for the economy at large. Now, concerns over Brexit continue to weigh on the pound sterling, with the currency hitting a 31-year low against the dollar yesterday. Now, how is this impacting on the commodities market when we look at how gold is trading? <laughs> Yeah, it's not having a good effect on the commodities markets. Uh, the, the prices are, are going down. The effect is if uh, the pound, for example, against the dollar uh, uh, goes lower, the dollar goes higher. It's strengthened. The euro is also down against the dollar. The dollar gains strength. And this means that um, if the dollar is stronger, people with, with a currency that is less strong, uh, take, for example, uh, Nigeria, but also many other countries find it more difficult um, to, to uh, uh, sustain their, their commodities uh, uh, purchases. It becomes more expensive for them. So that puts pressure on commodities prices uh, and on demand. So from the point of view of the commodities market, it's not a good development. Thank you so much, RH. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Now, still on the markets, this time in Asia, where trading were mixed on Wednesday as the dollar climbed after hawkish comments from Federal Reserve officials. The S X 200 closed down 0.57%, weighed by losses in the energy sector, which fell 0.35%, and a 1.36% slide in the materials sector. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 ended up 0.5% at 16,819.24, likely bolstered by a weaker yen. South Korea's KOSPI was down 0.15%, and we've seen South Korea's consumer price index rise at 1.2% in September from a year earlier, its highest in seven months. On the back of improved consumption, Hong Kong's Hang Seng was up 0.38% in afternoon trade. And back home, the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Paul uh, Upright, will visit the Nigerian Stock Exchange and sound the closing gong at the end of the midweek trade. During his visit, Mr. Upright is expected to meet with authorities and stock traders at the market. This will be the first visit of the British High Commissioner to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And Africa could become a significant global market for imported liquefied natural gas by 2025, with Egypt the main driver, as more countries are gas to power projects. Now, this is according to the Vice President of Gas and Power Development at the French oil major Tatar Tom Eyre with hundreds of millions of people living without electricity in the world's poorest continent, African countries are increasingly turning to gas to take advantage of lower global LNG prices amid a supply glut. It says uh, Egypt could be importing between 15 million to 20 million tons annually within a decade, although actual volumes will depend on the development of its huge Zor gas field, which had an estimated 30 trillion cubic feet of gas. According to him, West Africa was seen importing 5 million tons a year, Southern Africa 4 million and Morocco 2 million tons by 2025. And to Mozambique, where the country and the Italy's ENI have signed a 20-year deal to sell BP liquefied natural gas an important step in getting a long-delayed project off the ground. ENI and Mozambique should, by the end of this year, reach a final investment decision on a project to build a floating offshore platform with the capacity to produce 3.3 million tons a year of LNG from gas in the Coral South Field. The Coral Field is part of a huge reserve discovered six years ago in the area for concession off the Mozambican coast. Giant gas reserves offer Mozambique an opportunity to transform itself from one of the world's 
poorest countries into a middle-income state and a major global LNG exporter. Gabon State Oil Firm has agreed its first oil production contract and says it hopes to soon generate enough, to, uh, enough revenue to compete uh, with international firms like uh, for offshore blocks. Gabon is an OPEC member and Africa's fourth largest producer with an output of around 220,000 barrels per day, dominated by international oil majors, Total and Royal Dutch Shell. The state oil firm Gabon Oil Company, GOC, was created by decree in 2011 and has until now mostly been focused on selling crude oil produced by international firms and refined products. Managing Director of GOC, Arnold Nganji Alanji, a former advisor to President Ali Bongo, said that the Mbumba field was signed a few days ago with the oil ministry. He explained that the GOC strategy was to optimize the company's revenues onshore and generate enough cash so that in two or three years, GOC could be a major actor with offshore fines. We have a much more prudent approach to offshore. We don't get involved in the exploration part. Why? Because exploration costs are far too great for us to take that risk. We spoke about capital flows before. It's important to note that for every franc that should have gone into the treasury, so we have to choose our investment zones within the limits of prudence this reality imposes. The acquisition of the Mbumba field will mean GOC has production capacity of around 1,500 barrels per day. Gabon has allocated many new offshore licenses in the past few years amid hopes that explorers would find vast reserves tucked deep below a layer of salt in the seabed similar to those discovered offshore Brazil. You're watching Business Incorporated from Channels Television. We'll take a break. I'll be right back. <laughs> 